So welcome everybody to this latest GCSE video on 162 Maths. In this video we'll be uh, doing another GCSE topic test on the higher syllabus working on probability. Now we'll include the exact or the copy of the questions in the description below for you to have a go at before watching this video and going through the answers. So let's get started on this AQA GCSE Maths higher probability topic test. So looking at question one, now we'll probably assume that we won't be using a calculator on these, but again, it may be a case where we're allowed, but I'll still show you the calculations of what we do if we uh, are allowed one. So it says the first spinner has 10 sections numbered what from one to 10. Here are the results of the 10 spins. And the question is asking us to circle the probability of getting a two on the next spin. Now, again, this is a bit of a trick question. Uh, they may be trying to get you to use relative frequency where you're looking at how many past twos there are and dividing it by 12. But for this, it's just basically going back. If it's a fair spinner, which it says that it is, um, and it says that right there, it means that the 10 sections, are, the chance of getting each number is gonna be equal. So the correct answer you should have is one over 10. Question two says that basically we've got 300, uh, 230 students in a school, 147 take, uh, take French, 94 students take Spanish, and 15 do not take French or Spanish. And the question is asking us to complete the Venn diagram. So in all of this, our total is 230. So every number that goes into this Venn diagram has got to add up to 230. Now I know straight away that 15 students do not study French or Spanish which means that this number here is going to be 15. And that means that the two circles need to add up to 230 minus 15, which is 215. Now, to work out what this middle section is, what I need to do is look at the total of what the number should be, which is 215, and I'm going to minus these two numbers because I want to work out what the overlap is going to be. So it's 147 plus 94, and that gives me an answer 26 so this middle number is going to be 26 now from the information that's given to me in the question that the number of students who study Spanish is 94 so to work out what this section is I've just got to do 94 take away 26 and that gives me an answer of 68 and likewise for French I know that there's 147 students who study French 26 are in the middle so how many are going to be here well it's going to be 147 take away 26 which is 121 and that's our Venn diagram completed now question 2b says that a student is chosen at random work out the probability that a student takes Spanish but not French so here we're looking at 68 over 230 and then we can then simplify that to be and let's just quickly simplify that to give me 34 over 115. Now with it being only worth one mark, do you have to simplify? It's good practice if you do. I'd be not a math teacher if I said that you shouldn't simplify your fractions. But again, when it's only worth one mark, if you were to write 68 over 230 and not simplify it, you should still get the same mark. For question three, it says Alex has 80 and 80% 80 chance of passing a test. Brad has a 6% passing a test. Work out the probability that Brad and Alex and Brad both fail their test. So looking at this, what we need to do is write this in decimals or as a fraction. I'm going to go for decimals, uh, but again, it's entirely up to you whether you want to go with fractions. Now, if this is on a non-calculated paper, I'd probably recommend going with fractions. If it's on a calculated paper, I'd recommend going with decimals. So actually, I've done a mistake there. So Alex is 20% of passing, which means then he's going to have a 0.2% chance of failing. Brad has got 0.6%. 0.6, so he's got a 0.4% chance of failing. And the question is asking, what's the probability that they both fail? So I'm going for this probability and this one. So it's 0.2 times 0.4, which is 0.08. So it's 8% chance of them both failing. Moving on to question four, it says that a factory makes light bulbs. The graph shows the relative frequency of a faulty light bulbs. And question 4a says 16 out of the first 100 bulbs are faulty. Plot the relative frequency on the graph. So here what we need to do is do 16 divided by 100, which is 0.16. So that's the value we want to plot against 100, uh, which is about there. And again, from this, I would then join the line up generally with a ruler. So it looks like that. The next question then says that 
the factory makes 20,000 light bulbs one month, work out the best estimate for the number of faulty light bulbs. Now, for this, what I would recommend that you do now, you can use any of these multiples of 20,000. So you could use either 100, 200, 400, 500, or 1,000. Now, personally, the more trials you do, the more accurate your probability is going to be, particularly when it comes to relative frequency. So I'm going to go for 1,000. So if 1,000 multiplied at 0.1, then basically what I then need to do is if I'm going to multiply this number by 20 because I want 20,000 so then from this all I then need to do is basically 0 0.1 times 20,000 and that gives me an answer of 2,000 Moving on to question 5 it says two bags both have red counters and blue counters a counter is chosen at random from each bag Circle the expression for the probability for choosing a blue counter with uh, from bag A. Now, with this, obviously, all probabilities add up to 1. So if the probability of getting a red is A, then the probability of getting a blue or not red is going to be 1 minus A. So it's that one that we then need to pick. It then says, write down an expression for the probability of choosing a blue counter from A and B. So here we're going to have 1 minus B. This is going to be B and that's going to be 1 minus b. Now in terms of right now an expression of choosing a blue counter from a and b, so we want this and this, so it's going to be 1 minus a, 1 minus b, and then what we then need to do is, well we can leave it as that, or if you wanted to you could expand it, but again you can leave it as that, or you can write it as 1, square, uh, 1 minus 2ab, and it's going to be plus ab. Uh, well, it's not, it's not going to be that, actually. It's going to be 1 minus A minus B plus AB. Again, so either the expanded one or the unexpanded one, the one in factorised, should be absolutely So now let's have a look at question 6. It says, in a Venn diagram, we've got set B, which represents brown eggs, set S, which represents small eggs, and eggs are brown, white, small, or large. It says that an egg is chosen at random. Work out probability that an egg is large and white. Now, I'll be honest, the notation of this and the labelling of this is not great. So let's first of all make a little note of what each of these sections are. So in terms of this section here, this 25, what does that represent? Well, it represents brown eggs that are large. So this number here represents brown and large. Now in terms of this number here, this represents small and not white, so basically it's going to be small brown eggs. And this number here represents small brown eggs. And let me just correct that because that should be white eggs. And this number here represents large white eggs. And again, this whole circle, and let's use some colours that we've not used. So this circle here represents brown eggs. And running out of colours, this circle here represents small eggs. So the question is asking here is work out the probability that egg is large and white. So basically here it's going to be 45 over the total number of eggs that there are, which is 25 plus 30 plus 20 plus 45. And if I quickly work that out, should have an answer of 120 and that fraction does factor uh, does simplify rather to give me 3 over 8. Now the next question then says that the first egg is replaced. Um, two more eggs are chosen at random for breakfast. Work out the probability that one is brown and one is white. So in terms of this let's have a look. So let's first of all work out what's the probability of selecting a brown egg. Well the brown egg is going to be 25 plus 30 over 120. So this here is the probability of the first egg being brown. 
Now, if you multiply that by the probability of the second one being white, well, in terms of a white egg, it's basically going to be 20 plus 45 over 120. So from this, what I can then do is work that out. So here I've got 25 plus 30, which is 55 over 120, which gives me 11 over 24, multiplied by 65 over 120, which is 13 over 24. And if I then work that out, so 11 over 24, multiplied by 13 over Actually, it should be 90 because we're replacing it. And just change that. Jeez, five over 119. And what we get is 65 over 119, in which we should have an answer of. Seven one five two eight five six. Now, what we then need to do is multiply that by two because we could obviously have the reverse of these. So, if I times that by two, I get an answer of seven one five over one four two eight. And there we go. Now, obviously, it may have another sort of variation of that fraction, but that is the fraction that we should have. So, question seven then says that a hundred people were asked if they owned a cat or a dog or both and it says complete the two-way table to show the number who do not own a cat or dog so if there's 100 people then all these numbers need to add up to 100 so what we've got is we're going to have 100 minus 13 minus 27 minus 32 so if I was to do just that I get an answer of 28 it then says the cat owner is chosen at random work out the probability that this person does not own a dog now if they own a cat we're looking for we're looking at just this data here in which there are 40 now out of those 40 how many do not own a dog well it's going to be 27 and that does not simplify so there is our final answer now the next part c and c then says that a person who does not own a cat is chosen at random work out probably so that this person owns a dog so the people that don't own a cat are these people here which have a total of uh, 60 now out of those 60 people how many own a dog well, it's going to be 32 so it's going to be 32 over 60 which is 16 over 30 and we can then simplify that as 8 over 15 and there is my final answer and that concludes the end of this probability topic test